resting upon you. And it is equipping you for the same work in this age. This age. This age. There was always an eternal flame burning inside the temple. But in this moment of history, when Eli was the priest and little boy Samuel was on a bed, who became the greatest prophet of all of Israel, that fire had almost gone out and there was no open vision in Israel. Why? Because of one man. What took place was this. In that moment, where that light had almost gone out. And Ichabod, which is, there's no glory, had almost invaded Israel. There was no glory in Israel. The light of God had started to dwindle, like it's happening right now in Perth and all over this nation. And who has the light? Jesus said, you are the light of the world. Jesus said, you are the light of the world. But in that temple was a light. In that temple was fire. And you cannot separate temples and fire together. And what happened was that little boy heard God speak, not once, not twice, but three times. And the first time he came to the priest who should have known better, young Samuel thought that he would know better. But he said, no, I didn't call you. Go back to your bed. Called him again, Samuel, Samuel. Came a second time and he said, did you call me again? No, I didn't call you. Go back. Then he started to recognize, maybe God's trying to get to you. Maybe God is trying to speak to you. Maybe God's trying to speak to somebody here tonight. Maybe he's trying to be speaking to you for a long time. But you're not listening. And the one thing about God when he speaks, it sounds like you. That's why you said, oh, that's me. I teach about all that for a long time. What happens is when God comes to speak, he sounds just like you. And you miss it many times. I've missed it many times. I remember walking into a, 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 a restaurant in India, in Bangalore, in India. I'd done a big crusade up north. I'd come down to Bangalore to do another crusade in a church. And the old pastor said, let me take you now to a great Chinese restaurant. And I said, no, 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 no. We want to take you to the Bangalore Five Star Hotel. I, I'm not sure what it was called. I think it was called the Oberoi. Have you ever been there? He said, no, I don't go to Five Star Hotels. I said, I'm paying the bill, not you. Because it's the cleanest place to eat and the safest. I've been going to India since 1981. So I know what it's like. As we walked in, because I gave in to him, I had my wife there, my son there, I had one of my intercessors there. As I walked into the restaurant, up the steps, I heard the voice of the Lord say, Son, don't eat. The food is, is cankered. This food will make you sick. And the old man said, Now, come on, you've got to eat. Ellie said, All I'll have is rice. And my wife said, All I'll have is rice. I said, yeah, I'll have rice and a little curry. While I'm eating the curry, I'm thinking I'm disobedient. My son ate a little curry, a little rice. He kept saying, have more, have more. We said, no, 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 just a little rice. I'm eating curry and I'm thinking, oh, God, forgive me. <laughs> have you ever done that? Yep. Oh, God, forgive me. Oh, God, why did I try and get my hair colored? Oh, <laughs> Don't worry, I can tell you a lovely story about that. <laughs> oh, God, forgive me. And I'm eating away there. Anyway, I woke up the next morning perfectly healthy. Thank you, Jesus. I'm healed by the blood of the Lamb. How do you feel, son? And he said, well, Dad, I'm feeling great. Hallelujah. There was no canker in that. Oh, it mustn't have been God. It must have been that devil. So we were there for a few days, did the crusade. <clears throat> Came back to Malaysia, Kuala Lumpur. <clears throat> Arrive, not feeling too good. Went to bed that night, middle of the night. Bang! Hepatitis. And hepatitis went three months. The doctor said, 
Russell, this will take 12 months to get out of your system. I said, no, it won't. Because the Word of God says, I live by every word. I do not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. All things are possible to him that believes. And I spoke the word for three months. I walked around the room. I used to go to bed like this for three months. I used to walk around the, uh, around the block every morning like this to get some exercise. I'd lost so much weight. I walked like this because I had liver pain for three months. And in the middle of the night, I walked, I went to the toilet. As slightly older men do in the middle of the night. <laughs> and I'm sure Eddie Russell would say, Amen. <clears throat> <clears throat> so, I got back into bed. I turned the light off and it was like, my God, something's going to happen. And my eyes were getting wider and wider. And something appeared in front of me and I heard this voice say, Son, have a blood test. I've set you free. That morning I went in the house, rang the doctor and I said, um, John, you better give me a blood test. He said, I told you you wouldn't be. I said, give me a blood test. He said, all right, come pick up the script and go around the corner and have a blood test. Had a blood test. A day later, he rang me and said, I don't know, what, what, have, what have you done? What have you done? What have you done? I said, you know who I am. I do a strange thing called pray to Jesus. A week later, I'm sitting in an aircraft and I'm heading off to Pakistan for four weeks of intensive ministry. Because God set me free. Amen. See, my God is a consuming fire. Our God is a consuming fire. And here the Bible says the mountain quaked. And the smoke descended. And it ascended like the smoke of a furnace. Fire is symbolic of his jealousy. The Bible says... In Deuteronomy 4.24, for the Lord your God is a consuming fire. He's even a jealous God. He's jealous of who you give credence to. He's jealous of who you run to. He's jealous of the things that you call idols. They could be smoking. They could be football. They could be some magazine. They could be music. It could be Shh. golf. Shh. I'll pray with you later. Okay, golf. But he's a jealous God. Because here's a consuming fire. Fire was used as a sign of judgment on those two boys. You see, if they had read Hebrews 10.31, which they couldn't have done then, That says it's a fearful thing, a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. And the genuine fire of heaven rained down upon Ananias and Sapphira and on those two boys, the two priests. And when they, that old man said, Samuel, what did God say to you? That little boy who was just weaned. How old was he? Three? Four? Maybe? Weaned from his mother's breast, laying on a bed, hearing God's voice. Now he stands up in front of that priest and prophesies, and prophesies his death, and prophesies the future of Israel. 
and prophesies the future of his life. And there you can see what God did. Where did he all get that from? Where did he get the sensitivity from? Where did he hear all of that? He had a mother called Hannah who was barren. And she said, God, give me a son. If you give him to me, I'll give him back to you. He was her first fruit. Amen. See how God's a consuming fire. And fire was used as a guide. In Exodus 13 verse 21, the Bible says, And the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of cloud. Why? The desert sun can burn. And I've been there. And by night in a pillar of fire. Can you imagine? Two million people, three million people maybe. And at night time there is a pillar of fire. A fire that covers two to three million people. Can you imagine the extent of it? Can you imagine them looking at that cloud by day? And that fire by night and still sinning? And still speaking against the leaders? And for 40 years, that pillar was there. God was in that. God was in that pillar by night and by day. And he still spoke those words. You see, we've got to walk worthy of the Lord. We've got to take steps that are worthy and that are righteous. Why? Because you're the temple of the Holy Ghost. You're the temple of God. And the Bible says if you destroy that temple or you defile that temple, God will destroy you. It's a book of Corinthians. And I'm going to make an altar call tonight because that fire of heaven, that fire of heaven is going to be here. I'm starting to feel it now. And I'm telling you, it's going to heal the sick tonight. And not only that, it's going to burn some dross off. It's going to burn some old habits off. It's going to burn some old thought patterns off. It's going to burn some old compromise off. It's going to burn some laziness off. You see, what happens is this. God answers by fire in 1 Kings 18, 24. Elijah tells the 450 false prophets of Baal, you get your sacrifice, split him down the middle, and you call on the God that you serve, and I'll call on the God of Israel, and let the God who answers by fire, let him be God. And all day they cut themselves and they called on their God. And Elijah stood there and read the morning newspaper. He relaxed. He ate lunch. And all day they were still cutting themselves and calling on their God. And nothing happened. And then in the evening, sacrifice. The morning sacrifice is at 9 o'clock in the morning. The evening sacrifice is at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. He called on the God of Israel. And I can imagine fire and brimstone came down and consumed that animal. Because the God who answers by fire, let him be God. Let him be God of your life tonight. Maybe you've been standing around the circle or the periphery but God's wanting to get inside the middle of it you can hear about God for 30 years and still go to hell you know why because you never surrender your heart to him you surrender yourself into the kingdom you call Jesus your Lord and your Savior your commander then the Bible says you'll be born again See, unless you're born again, Jesus said, you shall not enter the kingdom of heaven. Just because you were born in a garage, you're not a motor car. You're a human being. And some people say, well, I'm born into it. I'm telling you now, tonight, Jesus said you confess your way to heaven. And I've seen people all over the world confess their way to heaven because my God is a consuming fire 
and what he did for three million people at night time in the, in the middle of a desert he can do for you tonight you see the false prophets called on their God nothing happened I was in a church a few years ago in Perth about a thousand people and in the morning I was praying and the Lord said to me there's somebody here with cancer and so I I said there's somebody here you got cancer and it's it's been there for a long time and a lady came out an older lady and I kept thinking to myself this is not her but I'm going to pray with her anyway so I said to my wife you go that way and I'll go this way so I went and there that lady was standing and I prayed with her and I just didn't feel there was a connection listen when God gives a word there's got to be a connection amen he doesn't mince his words he doesn't waste his time anyway Ellie prayed with this young girl gorgeous young 35 37 year old uh, blonde mother of two gorgeous little girls standing next to her and I went and said Ellie said come she's got cancer we need to pray now I didn't know until afterwards but Ellie and myself we prayed for her we anointed her in oil and prayed over her cursed that cancer commanded to get off her body command the fire of God to hit her and set her free she hit the deck half an hour later she got up unbeknownst to me at that time she told me later she'd been fighting cancer in the mouth in the upper roof of the mouth for six years and six years before they had done an operation taken the cancerous tumor away and they had to do plastic surgery on her lips now her lips for six and a half years had no nerves in there she could not she could not feel anything she could kiss her children and her husband and not feel anything but as she's laying on the floor the moment she she just sort of she was gone and she came to about half an hour 40 minutes later and then she went like this and all the nerves got restored in the lips God healed that young girl and she stood up and started to cry and shout my God has healed me she grabbed the children started kissing them and started kissing her husband she went to bed that night saying God has set me free thank you Jesus woke up in the middle of the night pain everywhere swelling all over the jaw still could feel around the lips the nerves had been restored when God comes and gives something he doesn't come and take it away I never sing that song he gives and takes away when I sing that song I always sing he gives and gives some more because my God is a giver amen he gave his only begotten son to whoever believes on him should not perish but have everlasting life God so loved the world that he gave his son she went to bed that night woke up terribly sick next morning she was in pain kept saying I am healed by the blood of the lamb he has borne my griefs and carried my sorrows with his stripes I am healed and she declared it and declared it that night went to bed woke up the next morning worse woke up the next morning had to be dragged into her oncologist three doctors stood around her and said sweetheart it's come back to the lower jaw now we've got to take a whole section of the lower jaw away and uh, she looked hideous this beautiful girl she said no and come what may and they had uh, scheduled the operation for the Monday or the Tuesday of the following week and she went to bed every day she had to be literally helped around the room but kept declaring God's word because man will not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God you got a problem speak God's word over your body speak it over your mind speak it over your life speak it over your future speak it over your children speak it over your husband speak it over your wife don't go to sleep on it and don't rely on somebody else to read it to you you read it and then declare it because he's the high priest of our confession she went to bed on Saturday night declaring you're gonna have to carry me to church tomorrow morning but my god I'm going she woke up and five o'clock in the morning 
I've got to make a cup of tea. She got out of bed, went and made a cup of tea, and said, went, oh, it's all gone. It's vanished. Ran into the bathroom screaming, I'm healed. Went to church that following that morning and got up and said, my God has healed me. All pain's gone. You see, fire can burn away the dross. And it can burn off something in you tonight. You have no idea what God can do. Because he's a consuming fire. I've got to bring this to a close quickly. Moses was commissioned by God to go to Pharaoh and set two to three million people free. They'd been wracked in bondage and incarcerated in terrible jails and a life that was leading them to death. And God came as he walked by a bush and consumed that bush and it didn't die. He burned in that bush and out of that bush, God spoke to him and commissioned him. The Bible says in Jeremiah in chapter 20 verse 9, but his word was in my heart. He said, but his word was in my mouth as a burning fire shut up in my bones. His word was in my mouth as a burning fire shut up in my bones. It was in my bones. No matter where I walked, I could feel this fire. Because that it came out of the word. Out of his word. You see, David said this, in Psalm 39 verse 3, my heart is hot within me. While I mused, while I spoke, the fire burned. While I kept musing, while I kept thinking, while I kept speaking, while I kept muttering the word of the living God, the fire was burning in my belly. That's why we need the word. That's why we need him. Amen. The Bible says in Hebrews 1, 6 to 7, it says, And of the angels, he said, Who makes his angels spirits and his ministers a flame of fire? And don't ever think because a man or a woman comes to speak here, that's the minister. You're a minister. So are you. You have a spirit and a gift of reconciliation. Because Christ in you is the hope of glory. Amen. We're all ministers. We're all kings and priests before our God. That's how God created us. So, Daniel Shadrach Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego knew exactly what fire was all about. The book of Zechariah, verse 2, chapter 2, verse 5 says, Fire was around about Jerusalem. It was a wall all the way around Jerusalem. The fire of God was a wall all around Jerusalem. You touch, you touch the Jew, you touch the heart of God. You pray for the peace of Jerusalem every day. You love the Jew. You may not love what he does, because many of them don't know Christ. But they're his people. Hallelujah. Amen. You see, Moses was hid in the cleft of a rock. And God himself wafted by. Can you imagine what that was like? God going by. I'm telling you, that's why Moses said, I greatly fear and quake. This is an awesome, frightening place to be. But God had to push him into the cleft of a rock. In case that fire, who God is, consumed him. 
And Isaiah one day was praying in the temple and he saw him high and lifted up. And his train filled the temple. Would to God his train would fill your church next Sunday. Would to God that he would fill this temple now with his train this night. When John saw him, he said his eyes were like a flame of fire and I fell at his feet like a dead man. See, the greatest fire of, of the universe, the greatest fire that was ever on this earth was at Calvary's cross, Golgotha. That was the greatest burning, awesome, super miraculous, superheated fire when Jesus of Nazareth bore all your griefs, all your sins, all your thoughts, all your everything and all your diseases all at one time. He said seven perfect things from the cross. He was only up there for six hours, impaled with two nails, one in the wrist here and one in the wrist there, and one through the feet. They'd stripped out the strands of his beard, strand by strand. They'd put a filthy, evil crown of thorns on his head. They'd buffeted him. They'd stripped his robes. He was semi-naked. They whipped him 39 times. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah, there were furrows like the furrow of, a la of, a, of, a, of the ground when the plow goes through. You could see everything. Blood was flowing out of his face. Blood was flowing out of his back. That cat and nine tails went around the back and ran around the front and pulled strips of skin off the Son of God just for you, just for me. What he did, what he, what he went through, and he never screamed, never cried, never said, why me? He never said, stop this. Because he thought of you, and he thought of me at that very second, at that moment of six hours of untold agony for the sins of mankind. He bore our griefs and carried our sorrows. The Bible says, with his stripes, we are healed. And the Bible says, the last thing now, keyboard please, my dear, my dear friend, are you that up there? Where is he? <laughs> Very softly. Said on the day of Pentecost, softer, softer. It says, on that marvelous day, Jesus gave a commandment to 500 people at the ascension. Wait in the upper room until you be endued with power from on high. <clears throat> John the Baptist was the forerunner of Jesus. He was the herald of the coming of the Lord. You see there, he said, I indeed baptize you in water unto repentance. But there's one coming after me who's mightier than I am. I'm not worthy to kneel down and untie his shoelaces. But when he comes, he'll baptize you in the Holy Ghost and the fire. When he was talking about baptism, he was talking about immersion. Because that's what it means in the Greek. He will immerse you. I grab you and immerse you in water. This is nothing in comparison to what he'll immerse you in. And the fire. So speaking in tongues is fine, is great. But we need the fire that goes with it. Amen. And tonight, you know, and I know, what needs to be corrected. Corrected in your heart, corrected in your mind, corrected in our relationship. I'm a businessman. I don't have time to pray. 
you don't have time to run your business without praying. I can't afford to tithe. You can't afford not to. You see, God wants to correct us. He wants us to put him first. I have seen a vision tonight of a thousand people in the next flame conference. Is that possible? Oh, yes. A thousand people. Imagine the celebration. Imagine the worship. Imagine a godly response. Amen. Hallelujah. See, he bought. He surrendered his life. The Bible says, he that was rich became poor that we might be rich. That we might become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Thank you, Lord. That's what I want you to do, folks. I don't want you to talk. I want, I want to worship the Lord. I want you to stand in a minute. I want you to raise your hands to Jesus. And I want you to call and worship him, not loudly, but I want you to worship him from the very depth of, the, of your heart. Please don't talk. You know why? Jesus is here. Okay? Now keep moving towards him. That's the important thing. God's going to touch some people tonight. I was in one Assembly of God church. I don't want to keep you much longer. But then again, don't believe what I just said. <laughs> and I spoke this message on the Monday night. And from 7 o'clock in the morning until 5 o'clock in the afternoon, I didn't eat, I just drank. But all I prayed was this, my God, bring fire tonight let your awesome holy fire fall in this congregation tonight I got up to preach and in 10 minutes people were screaming in the place as the fire came before and started to touch them you see when we get ready who knows what he can do we give him permission Take control, Jesus. Amen. So as we worship this next chorus and we sing this consuming fire, I want you to make it your prayer. Not your next door neighbors, your prayer. And your prayer of dedication and love and mercy and grace to the God who gave his only son that you would have everything. And that tonight, I'm telling you now, Lives are going to change tonight. And bodies are going to be healed. And people are going to be touched in a very unique way. Amen? Are you ready? Let's stand. There must be more than this. Come on, sing. Raise your hands to the Lord. Breath of God, come breathe within. There must be more than this Spirit of God We wait for you Fill us anew 